the United States in the year 2013, a nation that faces many challenges, the economy, the deficit, national defense, and our role in world affairs. Who will respond to these challenges in a way that protects and preserves the principles and values of the American founding? The same organization that has so effectively performed this role for the past four decades, the Heritage Foundation. I'm Kay James. Since 2005, I've had the privilege of serving as a member of the Heritage Foundation Board of Trustees. Heritage is not only one of the most influential think tanks in the nation, we're also the most broadly supported public policy organization with hundreds of thousands of members across the country and a budget topping $80 million. Our mission is clear, to formulate and promote conservative public policies that are based on the principles of free enterprise, limited government, individual freedom, traditional American values, and a strong national defense. We are policy entrepreneurs and a visionary organization that strives to help keep the country on course. Time and again, our country's leaders have turned to heritage. There's no better place than the Heritage Foundation to lay out a fundamental redirection, strategically, of conservatism in America. Heritage has played a critical role for decades in bringing together serious conservative public policy scholars to study issues, to provide data, to provide expertise, and to help bring conservative principles to bear on the difficult problems of the age. We're here today to explore the American idea and I can't think of a better venue for this topic. Those of us who are the transmitters of opinion rely very heavily on the really difficult, important, empirical work that Heritage does. There's no institution that's done a better job or uh, has done more good work to own the confidence of its supporters than Heritage. Today, the Heritage Foundation is stronger than ever and fully prepared to lead the way into a new era for both our nation and our organization itself. For the past 36 years, we have benefited from the leadership of a most incredible individual, a man who was there from the very beginning. The year was 1971. Ed Fulner was 30 and Paul Weirich was 28. They were working for a Republican congressman and senator on Capitol Hill. Ed and Paul wondered why there were no conservative counterparts for the era's liberal think tanks. They decided to do something about it. And two years later, with a grant from Colorado businessman Joe Coors, the Heritage Foundation was born. Paul was president the first year and California businessman Frank Walton for the next two. Then, in 1977, Ed Fulner took over the reins of the organization. Since then, with the help of Executive Vice President Phil Truluck, he's guided the Heritage Foundation through an era of enormous achievements. One of the first came in 1980 following the landslide election of President Ronald Reagan. It was in the form of a comprehensive policy document which the new president acknowledged as providing important guidance for his administration. The Heritage Foundation provided us with copies of the remarkable 1,093-page work, Mandate for Leadership. The Heritage Foundation's research continues to be useful to us and to our policymaking process. As a matter of fact, one of the people it's been most useful to and used by is me. Of the 2,000 recommendations contained in the mandate, nearly two-thirds were eventually adopted. They included the famous Reagan tax cuts, which ushered in one of the biggest economic booms in the nation's history. Heritage again made headlines with a groundbreaking study outlining a missile defense system for the United States. It became the basis for the strategic defense initiative announced six months later by President Reagan. Eventually, SDI was credited with helping to bring about the breakup of the Soviet Union and the end of the Cold War. 
At a celebration of the Heritage Foundation's 10th anniversary, the great communicator himself acknowledged the contributions. Success in politics is about issues, ideas, and the vision we have for our country and the world. In fact, the very sum and substance of the work of the Heritage Foundation. In just 10 years, the Heritage Foundation had established itself as a powerful force in bending the U.S. public policy in a more conservative direction. And we were just hitting our stride. In the 1990s, Heritage policy ideas formed the basis for the contract with America and the first ever major reform of the country's welfare system. The 1990s also saw the introduction of the highly regarded Index of Economic Freedom, as well as the establishment of the Center for Data Analysis, providing an alternative to liberal analysis of the effects of legislation on important economic and cultural aspects of American life. In 2000, we established the Center for Legal and Judicial Studies, renamed in 2013 for its long-standing leader, Ed Meese. The purpose of the Center is to foster an interpretation of the Constitution more in line with the vision of the Founding Fathers. Contributions during the administration of President George W. Bush included laying the groundwork for the Bush tax cuts and the creation of a Homeland Security Task Force in the wake of 9-11 terrorist attacks. The President expressed his appreciation. Heritage has been an advocate for free enterprise, traditional values, and the advance of liberty around the world. My administration has benefited from your good work, and so has our country. As the years have gone by, the Heritage Foundation has steadily added to its list of achievements. Launching our 10-year Leadership for America campaign in 2007, fighting for school choice and to save the DC Opportunity Scholarship Fund, taking on the deficit, entitlement reform, spending, and the tax code with Saving the American Dream, our most comprehensive policy plan in 30 years. And in 2010, one of our boldest moves, the creation of Heritage Action for America, increasing our ability to turn conservative ideas into reality on Capitol Hill. Perhaps what Ed Fulner and Phil Truluck have meant to Heritage was summed up best not long ago by former New York Mayor Rudy Giuliani. You've remained true to your mission of building an America where freedom, opportunity, prosperity, and civil society flourish. You've been a guiding light in Washington, and the entire country has benefited from your, from your great work. At the Heritage Foundation, there's no shortage of challenges. Our agenda is full. We are, as always, in high gear and focused on the future. We have flourished under the direction of Ed Fulner. We owe him a great debt, as does the nation. And now, we look to a new era and a new president, one who believes wholeheartedly in our organization and our cause. This organization is in a position to do more to save our country than any organization that I'm aware of. The only reason, the only place I would consider leaving the Senate for is the Heritage Foundation. And I can assure you that for any conservative in the House or the Senate, leaving there to become president of the Heritage Foundation is a big promotion. Senator DeMent, on behalf of the Heritage Board of Trustees, the staff, and hundreds of thousands of members across the country, welcome aboard. Never has America needed the Heritage Foundation more. Never has Heritage been more ready. So as Ed always says, onward. <laughs>